OK, so this video goes through all the ways you can try and speed up your Windows 10 system. Now, first of all, if you're running a system that's older than 2018, you've probably got a hard disk drive rather than a solid state drive, which basically means that you're never going to make your computer the fastest computer in the world. But it's still worth following these instructions because obviously, these little tweaks can help. Now, if you want to find out if you've got a solid state drive or a hard drive, then I'm going to show you a quick way of doing that. Just go down to the taskbar at the bottom of the screen just here. Click on the right mouse button. That's the button on the right hand side of the mouse, not the left. Then you should get this menu come up, go up to task manager, left click and then click on more details just there. Go into the performance tab just up there and here you will see if you've got a hard disk drive like mine, you will have HDD in there. If you've got a solid state drive, which is one of the new faster hard drives, you've got you should have SDD in there. So if you've got SDD in there, then there is hope for your system. But if you've got HDD in there, then like I say, it's never going to be the fastest laptop or desktop in the world, unfortunately. And I would suggest to start saving those pennies and uh, put them towards a new computer with a faster processor and hard drive in them. So I'm going to go through, like I say, all the steps I can think of that could make your computer run quicker, regardless of whether you've got an HDD or an SDD drive. So first of all, while we're in here, if we click on the little start up tab there, and if there's anything in there that you think to yourself, I don't know what that is or I don't really want that running at startup, then what you can do is like in the case of Microsoft OneDrive. Now, I don't actually use OneDrive. This is the startup tab. This shows you most of the programs that run when the computer starts. So at the moment, Microsoft OneDrive is enabled. That means it's going to start up with the computer. And as you can see here, the startup impact is very high, which means it impacts the startup. It makes the startup longer of your computer if it's high. If it's low, then it shouldn't impact it too much. But obviously, if you don't use it, then turn it off anyway. So to turn off anything here, just move your mouse over the line of the program or app that you want to stop running at startup and then click the right mouse button and then left click disable. And now that means on my system, Microsoft OneDrive won't start with the computer. So next thing I want to do is I just want to shut this off. So click on the cross in the top right hand corner. Going to make a few little cosmetical changes here. Now, one of the annoyances with Windows 10 is if you move your mouse over this little icon here, you get all this gump come up. And of course, on a slow system, that takes forever. You've just got this white box and a lot of the time just sitting there doing nothing. So how do you turn that off? Well, move your mouse over an empty area of the taskbar. Click on the right mouse button. Go up to News and Interests and then go across and take the tick out of Open on ho Hover. And there you go. As you'll see, I hover over it now and it doesn't happen, doesn't pop up. So if you want, don't want this here, the weather, then again, right click on any blank area of the taskbar, go up to News and Interests and go to Turn Off. And that turns that off. One less thing to load at startup again. Then if you go over here, you get this come up. Now, what's all that about? Again, that can take time. It can really ruin your experience on the computer. So again, click on the right mouse button over any blank area of the taskbar, go up to search and there's an open on hover there. Take the tick out of open on hover. And now when you hover over that, there you go, it doesn't pop up and annoy you. Now, if you're not too worried about the search box there again, right click on any sort of empty area of the taskbar, go up to search and what you can do is you can take out the show search highlights. So again, that takes out whatever picture is in there. Going to speed up the system a little bit. Not a great deal, but a little bit. But if you want to turn off the start, the search bar altogether, then again, find a blank area of the taskbar, right click on it, go up to search and then just go to hidden just there. While we're down in the taskbar, let's just right click on it again and go into taskbar settings. So left click. And what we want to do here is we just want to turn off a couple of the 
uh, icons that appear on the taskbar. So scroll down, go to select which icons appear on the taskbar. I don't need meet now because I never use it. That's down here. Turn that off. The power is a good thing to, to have on there. Network's a good thing to have. Volume is as well. Windows update status. Yep. Good to have that on there too. Let's just go back on that. And then we can just come out of this. And then again, I'm going to right click on an empty area of the taskbar. And I don't need this task view button here. That's this here. I'm going to click on show task view button. That will remove the tick and that will remove that. Two, if there's any icons down here that I don't want, I don't use this mail icon. So again, I can right click on it and then left click unpin from taskbar. The next thing I want to do is I want to just try and speed up the uh, time it takes for these things to come up. So what I'm going to do is click on the start button and then type control. OK, and as I type control, you should see control panel come up under best match. Left click on control panel. And then what we want to do is we want to make sure that view by is shown as large icons. So if it says category like mine, click on the word category, click on large icons. And then what we want to do is we just want to go down to system there, right click on it and then left click open. And then here we need to go to advanced system settings, left click that and then go into performance there and click settings. And then what we want to do is we want to take out the ticks just up here, take all of these out here until we get down to this section here, show shadows. So show shadows under mouse pointer, we can leave that unticked. Show shadows under windows, untick that. Show thumbnails instead of icons, leave that tick. Show translucent section selection rectangle, yep, leave that tick. Show window contents while dragging, can untick that. Slide open combo boxes, untick that. Smooth edges of screen fonts, leave that ticked. Smooth scroll list boxes, untick that. And untick use drop shadows for icon labels on desktop. And then click on apply and then click on OK. OK again and then click on the cross. But that should hopefully speed up the time it takes for things to appear. The next thing we can do is click on the start button, go to the settings icon just there and then go into personalization. Click on colors and turn off transparency effects. And that again really does help speed up the system. You can also go into lock screen there and turn off window spotlight. Just change that to a picture so it's not going out to the Internet every time you uh, log into your computer. Turn off, get fun facts, tips and more from Windows and get rid of all these boxes down here. So click on the icon and just choose none on any of them. Any of them that have got icons in, the ones that have got pluses in, you can ignore because they're already got nothing going on. And then show lock screen background picture on the sign in screen. Turn that off. Don't need a background picture when we're signing in. The next thing we can do is we can go to start just down there, turn off show suggestions occasionally in start. Don't want to be suggested to new apps and icons there. Again, takes up processing power and memory. Go back to settings and then what we want to do is we want to go to display sound and notifications. So go into that, go into notifications and actions. And the best thing to do is take out all the ticks here apart from allow notifications to play sounds and then scroll down. And if there's any apps there that you don't want to receive notifications for, you can turn them off by the toggle button there. So let's go back again on this page. And the next thing we want to do is we want to go to apps just here and it take a few seconds, but let this list build up. Now, if there's any apps in here you don't use, then what you can do is you can uninstall them or you can stop them from running in the background. So say this one here, 3D viewer. I never use that. So click on it and then click uninstall and then uninstall again. And that'll uninstall it from the system. If there's some apps here, like say, for instance, Cortana, that the uninstalled is grayed out. What we can do is we can click advanced options and we can turn off background apps. There you go. Turn that off. And just have a look down there further to see if there's anything else like run at startup. No, there isn't for this one. So that's fine. So that's going to stop Cortana from running in the background. So carrying on down through this list, um, there's a few here that you could probably get rid of. Alarms and clock, like I say, that's 
got the uninstall grayed out. Apps installer, that's got the uninstall grayed out. Calculator, if you never use the calculator, you can uninstall that. Camera, that is grayed out. But like I say, if you don't want the camera running in the background, you can click on advanced options and go down to background apps and turn it off and then go back again and carry on working your way down that list. There's quite a few that you can uninstall, but there's also quite a few that you can't. The main ones, like I say, are ones that you don't use, that you should really be concentrating on. So there's another one here, Mixed Reality Portal. Never use that, let's uninstall it. Keep going down, Movies and TV, never use that, so uninstall that, but just keep going down. And if there's anything that you think, like I say, you don't recognize, and you're not too sure, then leave it, or you can just go into it, go into advanced options, and then go to background apps and just switch that off. And at least that won't run in the background. And if it does cause you any problems, you can go back to it and switch background apps on for that particular app. So other things we can do is check to make sure that the system isn't updating. So go back and go into update and security and just check in here to see whether there are any updates going on in the background because quite often Windows is at its slowest when it's downloading and installing updates and sometimes on some of these machines with hard disk drives, HDD drives in, it can take four or five hours for all the monthly updates to install and obviously there might be times when you haven't got it on for four or five hours so therefore it's a good idea, if you can, to keep your computer switched on, on or after the second Tuesday of the month, around 9 a.m. American time, I think it's New York time, that's when updates are generally released by Microsoft. So sometime after that, leave your computer on for, if you can, most of the day, and hopefully that'll capture the updates, download them and install them, or the computer will be ready for you the next time you want to use it. If you want to check for some updates now, then just click on that check for updates and let it do that. Now, one of the things I've noticed is obviously a lot of laptops will shut down if not been touched for a little while. Now, it's a good idea while it's doing updates to obviously have it plugged in at the main so that the battery doesn't run out and also so that it doesn't go to sleep. So how do you stop your laptop from going to sleep or your computer from going to sleep? Well, click on the start button, type the word control, and then hopefully after a few minutes under best match, control panel should appear. And then we go to power options just there. And then what we do is we go to choose when to turn off the display. And basically we can leave the display options as is, but if you've got a sleep function in there, then when it's plugged in, turn sleep to never. Select never from the list there. Leave the turn the display off to 10 minutes or whatever you like, and then click save changes. Let's just come out of that. As you can see, yep, I'm downloading and installing updates, so it's likely to be slow. I'm just gonna let those install in the background. So the next thing to do is, again, click on the start button, type on control, on your keyboard and then click on control panel at. And if you don't search for things on your computer, if you don't use the search box up there, then what you can do is you can go into indexing options, turn off indexing. So what you do here is you just click on any one of these, click on modify and then click on the little arrow there and take any ticks out of any boxes that appear. Go into uh, these folders here and just make sure that there's no boxes that still need unticking. I'm just going through all of this. No, okay, so click on okay and there we go. That's disappeared. We've got start menu still appeared. So let's just go to click on that and go to modify. See if I can find that. It's not always as easy to find as uh, as you think. So it doesn't really matter if you can't turn off start menu. There's not a massive amount in there anyway for it to index. But basically indexing for searching for files does take a lot of time. And uh, it's good if you don't use that search up there. To, uh, to limit the number of places that the computer indexes. Another thing to do is to use the inbuilt tools to clean up your computer. So click on the start button and then just type 
cleanup. And as you're typing it, there you go, you've got disk cleanup just there. So click on that and just have a look through here and tick any boxes along here. You can, you can tick them all, to be quite honest with you. They're all safe to delete. I'm going to tick all those and then click on OK. Click on delete files over here and just let that run through. Could take a little while. Sometimes this is quick, sometimes it takes a while. But what we're going to do is once this is finished, we're going to go through and we're going to run this command again. There you go. That's finished. The box has disappeared. So I'm going to click on that, type clean again, click on disk cleanup up there and then cl click on clean up system files just there. And this goes a bit deeper into the system. If you see this flashing just down here, click on that and there you go. It's just scanning and seeing what it can clean up. So that bit could take a little while. While that's scanning through, I'm just going to click on the start button there. And again, if there's any icons on the start button here that you don't use, then you can always right click on them and then left click uninstall and then uninstall again. There's some if you do use them, but perhaps you don't want these to be live icons like for instance photos shows you a preview of your photos but it takes a lot of processing power and time to show those photos so say if you still want to use it but you don't want them being shown in that little thumbnail then then just right click on that go down to more and go to turn live tile off and that stops previews from coming up in there and you can do that for a lot of apps not all of them but a lot of them this one here hasn't got it but if i go up to this one here Go to more, turn live tile off. And again, that really does help to save power from the computer's processor and saves a bit of time when loading the start menu. So uh, just going to uninstall a few things off of here that I don't use. There you go. Just go through, uninstall. And like I say, if you do use them, then right click, go to more and turn live tile off. Let's go back. Let's just click on the start button there and go back to this here where we've got even more boxes we can tick to clean up the system. All of those, let's clean them up there. There's not a great deal to, to clean. So once we've done that, click on OK and then click on Delete Files. Now, normally when doing the system files, if you haven't done it for a while, then this could take more than an hour. So just leave it be, let it do what it needs to do. Because mine's a freshly installed system, it probably won't take too long and you might often find that this disk clean box is just left on the screen and when you sort of click away from it it disappears like it did just then now if you've got a hdd that's a hard disk drive and if you want to check that again right click anywhere on the taskbar left click task manager go into performance there and just check under disk there whether it's an hdd or a sdd if it's an HDD, then we can go a step further now. We can defrag the hard drive. Do not defrag it if it says SDD. You will trash the hard drive. You will ruin it. You will lose all your information and probably break your computer. A lot of systems won't allow you to defrag if you've got a solid state drive and SDD. But if you've got an HDD, then it's all right to do that. So let's just close that down. Click on the start button and just type defrag. OK, and there we go. Defragment and optimized drive. So click on that. And then what we can do is we can then just click on the main hard drive and then click optimize. Again, this bit might take quite a while, but as soon as it's finished, you'll know it's finished because you'll have a date where it says never run there. So there you go. I hope this guide has given you some ideas on how to clean up your system. I'll be doing more of these guides with regards to perhaps internet browsers like Microsoft Edge, Chrome, Firefox and all that, showing you how to clean these up later on. So please make sure you've subscribed to my channel so you hear about these videos as and when they come out. And if you did like this video, please consider hitting that thanks button below and donating to this channel. Also, if you're in the market for a VPN, a Fire Stick, a Fire TV Cube or Fire Stick accessories, then have a look in the description down below. We've got some great deals from you. And buying through those links again really does help support this channel. It helps me to dedicate more time into researching and bringing you these videos. And also, whilst you're at my YouTube channel, why not stick around? I've got thousands of other videos for you right here, right now. Hopefully, whilst you're here, you're going to find something to educate you, entertain you, amuse you, and maybe even save you some time and money.